Well, today on ScoobTube, it's an interesting start to the episode because, James, you and I met yesterday mm. and spent last night at a function together. And we've really been holding off on the chat so as not to get to know each other too well before we start the episode because it's important for the guests to have the authenticity. Yes, it's been very difficult. <laughs> <laughs> I oh, keep going to say something. I'm like, no, I'll just wait just for hold tomorrow. On. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> Little awkward silences. And then yesterday I was like, We'll just save this for tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Don't don't talk about that. Uh, so I was thinking about how how to introduce you because the resume is pretty long. Yeah, it is. Yeah. I sometimes like, what do I drop off? What do I leave out? Mm. What what do I add? We've got time today, so take it away, man. Yeah. So obviously, I'm James. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I needed that. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, yeah, I'm 25. I am a model, a triathlete, and I work in education support in, um, yeah, a primary school back down in Cobram. Yeah. You working with kids would be hard. Mate, it's so hard, but then it's so rewarding at the same time. Yeah. Like, there's some, there's some shocker kids, but but we love them. Yeah. They're they the best They're the darndest things. Oh, they give me some good shit. I preferred to work with adults because I felt like I wouldn't get as emotionally attached and invested. You know what I mean? It's such a line because you get so hard. Like, I know it's so hard. Yeah. And then, so I'm in a primary school and then when they go like from year six to year seven, you lose them. <laughs> like, yeah. Or the kids that like come and go, you just get so attached and like, I don't want you to go. They're off on they, the journey of yeah. life. You, know, you get to see where they end up. I sometimes like... You could follow them around though, I guess. Is that a bit weird? Only if you nah, if you're looking if you out for their best interests yeah. and you're really cheering them on in life. Like I reckon fine. in ten years, I'd love to just like do a Facebook search on some of them and yeah. <laughs> see where they're at. Do a Zoom chat. Yeah. Get a Zoom classroom reunion. Yeah, true. <laughs> a a triathlete as well, huh? <laughs> yeah. So I started that about two years ago. Why'd you start um, that? Why? Mm. Well, I started the before. So I'm in Bologna MPT, which I forgot to add in there. Part, that's the thing about introducing you i was like well where, where do you start where do you where start you yeah you stop and so i um just before i lost my leg i was going through like crossfit and i was um really training in that i started doing some competitions and that sort of thing and then i thought well as an add-on or like an extra or something to complement um the training that i was already doing i wanted to start doing triathlons and then that was when i ended up losing my leg so then yeah i was like well as soon as i lose it and go through go through that I'll I'll go straight into triathlons mm. yeah. how'd you lose your leg yes yeah, so I had cancer what sort of cancer so o it's called osteosarcoma uh -huh. it's in your bone Bones, yeah. and basically when your bone cells are forming they just get muddled up and then eventually turn cancerous shit yeah so that oh you did a bit of chemo treatment yeah so how was that fuck mate rough it was mm. when, when I first had it you know it, it it's a slow burner. And so I was like, oh, this is all right. Like this, this doesn't bother me. And then I got home <laughs> afterwards and it, it fucks with you for a week. Not only your whole body, but also your mental health and thing like, it, yeah. So there was two different locks. Um, one of them, I think they were pretty much as bad as each other. So they both had different pros and cons, pros and cons. Um, the first one would, it would knock me for a week. So didn't want to eat, um, had barely any energy. Um, I guess for a whole week you would, I was just depressed yeah, right. and I'm not really a depressive depression. Like don't really have that, that sort of person. Yeah, yeah. I'm not that type of person. So I think once I figured out that it was just like that first week that I had to get through, you know, day by day, there's a light at the end of the tunnel through that. And then I would have two weeks off and I would mm. feel normal and then I would go back. And then the other one was... It was a week, you said, after getting it that you'd start to feel crook. Yeah, well... It's poison, isn't it? Like, it's just poison for poison your cells, in your for body. your bones, for yeah. your brain too. Shit. Yeah. And then, so it would take a couple of days and then it would last, last a week. So even in that, I, I just wouldn't talk to anyone. I would isolate myself. Yeah. Um, just because that was, like, my difficult time. And I thought, well... Um, you just don't want to talk to anyone. Yeah. You don't want to keep going. And it, all the questions that you get, how are you? Did you what have you a doing? lot of support around you? Family, friends or? Well, 
I say no, but then yes. Like I don't really have much family. Yeah. Um, like my mum died when I was eight. Um, I ran away from my dad at 12. Yeah, boy. Yeah. Or you're on a fucking Razor scooter. <laughs> <laughs> what brand though? <laughs> Razor. Really? Yeah. I mean, I had a, uh, a actually no, my mate had a JD bug with the front suspension, the little front suspension oh, yeah. in the wheel. Yeah. Boozy. Razor scooter days. We were around when the scooters came out. Yeah. Now that these scooter sick. boys are doing flips and that. And I dumped it. Or. Every time I walk past the place, I'm like, oh, I wonder if my scooter's still there. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Um, it was. Well, now we've gone off on a little tangent. I yeah. don't know whether to go back to the to the sort of cancer treatment or go down this road, but we'll, well, I guess we've got a lot to unfold. It's mm. probably going to be a long episode, but w- the chemo wasn't working and then they had to amputa- amputate yeah, your leg. Yeah, so or? first of all, they were like, we'll do a three-month chemo plan. We will, um, they'll kill it off a bit. Um, once it's died off, we'll go in, we'll just remove that little part of the bone. Then we will do a bone graft, but... In that three months, like the pain also got significantly worse. Um, prior to it, I was okay. I was managing fine. But then there were some times when I had the chemo and then, you know, there were two like sort of main events where one night I was at home and the pain just went for six hours. Oh. And it was that painful that it affected really my whole body. So if I moved my arm my body would hurt and the pain, like the pain would come from the leg. But if I moved my arm, it would like hurt it more. Ah. And so I was literally just stuck in bed. I, I couldn't move because I was like, once I move, um, like obviously I had pain medication, that sort of stuff, but that didn't work. And then there was another time when I was in hospital and the same thing happened. They had given me so much pain relief that like they couldn't give me any more. Really? And I still had so much pain. Like to the gills, like crying, yeah, on the verge, and like every nurse that come in, I was like, "Don't fuck off, like don't talk to me." Yeah, you'd be in a pretty bad place. That would hurt, yeah. But eventually, it just made me a bit dozy, and I was able to fall asleep. And then I woke up with the pain gone. Like it just took that that long time. How'd you feel when they said we're, we're chopping off the lower half of your leg? Yeah, look, I had started to accept it. Um, I ignorantly would say to my friends, you know, like whenever you would Google, if you ever Google osteosarcoma, the first thing that comes up for treatment is amputation, amputation. And so because that was never sort of given to me or explained that that could be a result of what they may have to do to sort of um, cure it, Mm. um, I would ignorantly say to my friends, if the foot goes, I go, like I'm just not doing it. Oh, really? Yeah, I wasn't prepared for it. Well, I, I, I think... When I say I wasn't prepared for it, I only say that because that's how I thought I would react yeah. to it. When it got to the day of um, sitting down and the um, the surgeons and the, I forget what they're called, um, just cancer doctor, <laughs> cancer doctor um, he was, when it got down to that, I had, I actually had woken up that, sm- that morning and sort of had like, say like a little vision that of my surgeon telling me amputation. So, yeah. you know, I sat in the waiting room <laughs> with my nan and I was like Googling prosthetics and um, in that amount of time that we waited for the appointment, I think I prepared myself and I was okay. So then when we, when we went in and sat down and they said amputation, I was like, okay, yeah, like, let's go. Yeah. Um, I think like somehow they were more shocked <laughs> than I was um, and they didn't really know how to they just wanted to help me and I was like, no, no, like I'm actually fine. I've processed it. It's, it's okay. So you just accepted it. Yeah. And then. Did you Google any like novelty prosthetics when you were looking at it? Nah, because I was like, I'm not a bougie bitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like a, a pirate star or some shit. Like a dinosaur. Yeah. Right? <laughs> For book week. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, but yeah, so the, w- once they told me, I was like, all right, no worries. I signed, I signed the form. Um, then when I've gone, like, oh, when, when is it going to happen? In five days. So oh. then that was like, oh, like, literally in five days, my whole life's going to change forever. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, w- I was actually really okay with it. My friends and sort of the family that I do have were probably more upset or, like, more emotional than I was. Sympathising for yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. And I just think it shocked them 
more and because I think you know even probably a week before I sort of I just had that feeling and I sort of was processing and thinking about it in my head like it, it'll be okay if they amputate it um, and I hadn't sort of actually expressed to anyone that that's what I was thinking mm. so I think it probably shocked them a little bit more yeah um, like I remember in the appointment my um, cousin who at the time we were very close she had messaged me and um, you know to me she was like a sister and we had a strong bond. She messaged me and was like, how'd you go? <laughs> and my reply was, um, great, they're chopping my foot off next Tuesday. Don't call me, don't talk to me. Because oh, <laughs> I was like, once I would talk to her, that would, Stay just because it was like a fragile, yeah. fragile situation, that would have got me. And I was like, I don't, I'm okay. I'm only going to cry because I just feel like a little bit vulnerable and a bit like down at the time. You need to stick to stick to that positive. Right? Yeah, like I just needed to stay strong, process it more myself. What was the cover recovery period like? Like ha having to learn to walk again, or what was the deal? Yeah, look, I think what you would think would be the hardest transition was the easiest. So yeah. I had the operation done on a Tuesday. Mm. Um, on Friday, I pretty much just argued with the doctors all day. So you wake up with an epidural, so can't feel from the waist down yeah um you feel like you're stuck in bed because moving with epidural i was like shit what if i paralyze myself or like i don't know yeah um so but also i was like i'm not fucking doing a shit in this bed <laughs> <laughs> i'm not taking a pen <laughs> so i argued with him all day and um you get you up out of bed well to, to take, take all the well no to take all the pain meds out Oh, and right. like pull out the epidural and they, they, were, they weren't going to do it. But I was like, no, I'm telling you now, like I want it. Like, Gotta go. Yeah, I was like, at least shut it off and see how it goes and yeah. then pull everything out. And so they did um, like Friday night, Saturday morning and I never had pain since. I, well, yeah, I had no pain. As soon as I pulled it out, I just hopped up literally <laughs> <laughs> and hopped in the shower. And no pain from nah, like no pain. The, around the wound. Like honest, no pain. Shit. I thought it would be so painful. And even with all those drugs, before I went into it, I was like, oh, it's still going to be painful. Does yeah. your brain know that it's like, obviously there was, it used to communicate with that part of your body. It still does. So that's where the phantom pain. Oh. Yeah. So phantom pain. we've been doing some spiritual shit lately in here. Oh yeah. Phantom pain. I feel like it comes from the spirit realm. You reckon? Well, you know, your psyche. Uh, like the well, it comes from your brain doesn't recognise that it's gone. Yeah, so you so stub you stub your toe on the coffee table and your brain... Yeah, goes. I'll say, oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, all uh, the time. Yeah. I'm like, fuck, I actually didn't feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> or when someone kicks me, like, oh, <laughs> nothing. <laughs> Get the razor but scooter in the, in, in yeah. the metal shin. Yeah, true. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so... So I went home mm. um, a week later because like you don't need to do rehab, you don't need to do anything. Um, oh yeah, and the phantom pain thing that I got it the first couple of days, but then the rest of it, I sort of just learnt to sort of distract myself because it was my brain that was thinking about it, not myself. Um, and I rarely get it. Every now and then I might have like a shoot up the heel or like my toe yeah. might just like get a bit randomly. Numb. Like it'll just happen yeah, when you're not like, doing anything. Yeah. Yeah, your brain's just trying to check if there's still a foot there or something. Yeah, What's oh, the eh, no <laughs> error. <laughs> Control or <laughs> delete. <laughs> <laughs> so t talk to me about running away on a razor scooter. Yeah, so I um, my mum died when I was eight. Yeah, okay. Um, she had cancer. Oh no. So when I found out I had cancer, that's what was in my head the whole time. Yeah. Cause you think one, you already think you're gonna die. And then two, I've had my mum die from it as it's a result. Genetic thing, like yeah. a life thing, yeah. Which it wasn't genetic, but yeah. Um, anyways, it's a whole different. <laughs> um, yeah, so my mum died when I was eight. My dad, um, so obviously I lived with my dad after my mum died. And he he was a drug addict. Um, he had been a drug addict, drug addict my whole life. Um, and slowly... As I got older, you know, he he was abusive, uh, physically, emotionally, mentally, and you know he had girlfriends and he would abuse them, and I watched that all the time. And because I was younger, 
I did see it with my mum, but I didn't really pay any attention because I was younger and I didn't know yeah. what was going on at the time. Um, so I grew up around that. Um, we, I basically had no dad. I was doing everything myself. Um, yeah, and he... So I got to about 12 and the week before I was sort of like floating the idea in my head. I was like, I just don't want to be here anymore. This isn't what I want. I'm sick of it. Like, I'm scared to come home. I don't want to go to school, but I have to like go to school to get away from home for a couple of days. Or, you know, there was even like, he would drop me off at my auntie's and just leave me there for a week and then come pick me up. And then he would just abuse me when we got home. Um, But... Yeah, so I sort of floated around with the idea um, probably like a week or two before. And then I would say to my, say to my nan, just to s- see what would happen. I was like, oh, I'm thinking of running away. She was like, right, well, what would you do? I'm like, well, I have nowhere to go, but I just don't want to be here. So the day that, it, that I ran away, we had gone into a parent-teacher interview and I had said to the teacher at the time, I was in a naughty class. <laughs> <laughs> I spent a little bit of time in there as well. It was a good time, actually. Yeah. I'm glad I got in there. That's where the funnier kids were. Exactly. (laughs) We had fucking shitloads of fun. (laughs) And the teachers let us go. But I um, had sort of, like, expressed a little bit to her in that, um, you know, maybe I wanted to, like, go live with my auntie or... Was the teacher sort of aware of what was going on at home? Nah, because I never actually specifically told what was going on, but... um, just those parts, I was a little bit like embarrassed and I guess I didn't really recognise it too much at the time because that was what I grew up with. So Mm. it was like just normal behaviour. It's life for you. Yeah. It was life for you. Yeah. So I'd said something to her and then we got to parent-teacher interviews and she bought it up in a way like, oh, James has thought maybe... Oh, no. Yeah. (laughs) Um, He has like... She had no idea though, I guess. Nah, because I didn't say it. Yeah. And, you know, James is... um, express that maybe you should go live with his auntie and uncle or they have a better relationship or that sort of thing and then the second we walked out that parent teacher interview is when it all started Raged. yeah and then he was in the in the car like just i'm surprised we didn't crash because it's sort of just hitting me and while um, you're driving yeah while he was driving and then we got home funnily enough the police were actually at our house <laughs> looking for a car or something i don't know and so it was like nice for like five minutes and then the second they left it just started again and then I said to him I was like look I'm just going to go for a walk um I had so much fear to leave like he had and he had taken everything off me so he took yeah when we got home and so in the car such a control over you yeah, yeah he took my phone he took every little piece of technology I had and you know I was just sort of like stuck um so I went down at the end of our street thank god had like a telephone box so one eight hundred reversed my nan, and I was like, "Look, I'm actually leaving. Like, I need you to come pick me up." Because I was so scared, I was like, "Let me just go home. I'll come and call you to confirm it." Because like, I'm scared I'll get home and I won't be able to leave. So I went home, and I just like grabbed like, I don't even know what I grabbed. I just remember trying to grab a pair of undies and just some stuff. Because I also thought in the back of my head that I'd be back there at some stage. Yeah. I had nowhere, I had no family. And, and so it's your, it was your home too, so it's yeah, kind of, that's the base. That it's you, hard to leave all yeah. of that behind. And so, yeah, I just chucked some shit in a bag and went and caught her back on 1-800 reverse. It took me Razor Scooter yes. because I was scared that he was going to chase me. So I thought if I'm on my scooter, I would get away get a bit away faster. Her, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I went and hid and um, she, she came and picked me up. And then from there, um, yeah, sort of like had to find somewhere to live. So I went with my auntie and uncle, um, which was his sister, but that was also a bad decision. Were they abusive as well? Yeah, controlling, um, you know. Was that his, so his sister, you said? Yeah. Do you have uh, an idea of where your father's addiction and abuse stems from? I think his upbringing. Yeah. It's just a pattern. So my dad... Which is what a lot of people don't understand generational trauma is. Exactly. Um, and it's what disrupts a lot of people's lives when when a parent uh, becomes abusive or um, mm. puts trauma onto their child. That then carries through to the next generation. Exactly. It's just mm. a evolving process. Cycle. Yeah. Um, 
and I also think so that side of the family is indigenous. I also think there's some intergenerational trauma oh, from stolen absolutely. generations that have filtered yeah. through and it's just gone gone on through that cycle. Well, if you think about what it would do to some to a family, parents yeah. and children to be torn away from one another without any record of who, where, when, what, how, yeah. why, gone, disappeared. Exactly. Big country. Yeah. That's going to pretty much like if you're at home with children, if you think that they just get taken away from you one day, gone, you never see them or hear from them again, you don't know where they're gone. Or if you're a child or a young person, think getting dragged away from your parents, that puts a whole disruption into the into your yeah. life. Yeah, and then it happens again and again. Yeah, And then it lasts for generations. Decades. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I went and lived with his sister for a while and that was look it was the same but it wasn't the same yeah. you know i didn't really have abuse physically but or uh, emotional mental emotional abuse. mental um yeah. all the time like just it's walking on eggshells the whole time i lived there um i left there when i was as soon as i could um when i was 18 but like so you spent about six years there yeah yeah and then in a way, I then still looked at them as like my parents because that was who I spent all my time with and they were sort of like my parental figures. Mm. So then that even came into like, well, you know, I've never had parents, so I need to hold on to this and I need to like, they can treat me that way and I was mm. used to being treated that way. And It's such a human instinct to want to attach to those parental yeah. figures, isn't it? Yeah, even though I knew they were no good. Yeah. Um, yeah. How have you gone since that stage of your life finding older male and, and, and female role models in your life? Sometimes I don't think it really has affected me, but it does. Yeah. And then it, you know, especially my relationships. And I think that really stems from, you know, I didn't have parents and I didn't have any of those figures. And the figures that I had um, still treated me that way. So I think up until maybe the last year or two, I, I thought that it was okay and I would sort of think or would act that maybe no one else has ever loved me or no one yeah. else has ever liked me. So um, I just need to accept that that's what it was like and I'll do anything still to make them happy, even though they were treating me like shit. Isn't it? Um, it's such a grip when someone puts you through that psychological abuse and control. You feel such a, a need to um, please them and gain yeah. their acceptance. Because you think if you please them and you gain their acceptance, gonna they're going to okay. treat you a little better. Yeah. And they treat you a little bit better for the first, for a couple couple minutes and then yeah. it's all over. Yeah. It's just that part's just a game though, isn't it? It's yeah. just an act. Yeah. 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 I, and like me and them don't have any communication anymore. Um, Good. When I, when I went through cancer, I initially got the diagnosis and... They, yeah, they would, like, for the for the week, the duration of the week where I went from finding out I had cancer to then finding out I'm going to start chemo the week after, I had that whole sort of week, like, I was living by myself. I so, sorry, how yeah. old were you when you got the cancer diagnosis? 22, 23. Right, so you'd gone away from your auntie and uncle's house at 18, spent four years yeah. living... Where? I boarded with a with a mate for about a year and then I went yeah. by myself. Found a job and worked yep. and supported yep. yourself. Yep. And then got that. a cancer diagnosis. Yep. Ah, so what sort of people did you have around you at the time of the diagnosis? Friends? Mainly really just my nan. Yeah. Who's not actually my nan. Yeah. Just call her my nan. Is this um, the nan that was around at the time when you're at the public phone booth or is this yes. another Yeah, same one. Okay. So um She's just like my mum's great auntie that's been... Mum's side. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. So her... I have some really good friends that really stuck by me and were able to help and support me um, with everything and anything. Um, and I had just reconnected with my brother. So my brother, he fell into addiction um, after my mum died because well, my dad put him onto it to sort of help him. But then he ended up falling into addiction, so... He had gotten sober pretty much that year. and we What had did your dad get him addicted to? 
I don't know. So I've never oh, really asked. Yeah, 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 I've never really asked. I know it was like drugs, obviously. But um, yeah, I don't, sure really, one, yeah. don't really ask what type of drugs. Mm. And so he fell into addiction, um, you know, pretty much since I was eight. So it was about 10 years. Well, it's going, when, uh, when you sort of started with your life story, I was thinking it's, a, it's amazing that you haven't fallen down the same path. Yeah. It's quite a common thing when you start talking about childhood trauma and generational trauma. It's a lot of addiction stems from escaping that trauma of the past. Yeah. Just trying to get your mind out of that that bad place. And then that's the only way that some people can cope. Yeah. But for you, you had the strength and the My, my dad tried. To, yeah. Like he would sometimes like give me, try and give me a handful of pills. Right. <laughs> so the choice was there, but it was just something that I never wanted for myself or... Um, guess in a way I always knew or always thought that my life would be better and I'd be able to do a bit better so I, I always knew I wanted to steer clear from that path and sort of stop the cycle there yeah yeah the cycle yeah it's a hard thing to escape mm. interesting that you had that uh, inner desire to really push yourself out of that yeah environment I think I had it like my whole childhood even when my mum died and went and lived with my dad um the sparkle yeah you got the shine yeah not the shining from my mum. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you have memories of your mum? Yeah, yes and no. Mm. Like, I wouldn't be able to sit here and say I can hear her voice. Like, I wouldn't know what her voice sounded like. Yeah. I have an idea, but I don't have that memory of the voice. Yeah, I have just like little bits of like one time she stood on a snake or yeah, um, the the night that she died or her going through chemo. Do you have any really uh, positive and heartwarming memories? Yeah, it's a dumb one. <laughs> They're the best ones, though. She smacked me for something I didn't do. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you bitch. I was so pissed. Yeah. I was like, I'm not fucking talking to you. <laughs> like, seven. And so I was like in my room and like she came in and I just, I was like, here we go. <laughs> like, But then she apologised. Oh, no. Nice. Smacking me because she figured out it wasn't me. Yeah. And then she spent the night in my bed with me. Oh, that's, that's <laughs> she felt bad. That's not a dumb one. That's fucking beautiful, bro. Like karma. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's a good memory to have, though, like that uh, loving and nurturing nature of your mum. Mm. Mm. She's a good one. Yeah. Yeah. And you live on through her. Yeah, I think so. And now overcoming all of that stuff, abuse, trauma, running away from home, chemo, losing a leg. Now, f fucking look at you go. Yeah. Look at you go, man. It's fucking crazy. Yeah? Only Male model, running down the fashion runways, Paralympian soon to be, hopefully. Yeah. Doing triathlons, doing all this stuff and radiating such a good energy, man. Yeah. I, when I say it's crazy, like, I don't actually think, like, oh, look at me or anything no, like that. But, like, you, know, nah. you know, when you sit down and you think, fuck, all those years I went through that or I did that and then I did that and then that happened... I've still been able to just keep going. Yeah. And keep striving, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Strong. Yeah. Strong person. Yeah. Shit. Now, aside from your incredible good looks, what got you into modeling? It fell in my lap. <laughs> like, there's no, no, <laughs> I didn't do it. It happened to me. So, my, me and a friend had been like best friends for a month, sort of thing. Like, just, started a friendship and her family owned a um a clothing shop and they were going to start doing some like videos that they're going to make themselves because their sister started getting into like videography and that sort of stuff and yeah she just messaged me she's like hey do you want to come and um do this video for our shop i was like okay whatever all, all right then like it'll be fun I'll have a few drinks and so i did that and then that sort of circulated <laughs> online and just through to the right people. And then it went to um, someone else, someone that had seen it, like a um, creative director um, was organising a shoot and he was like, hey, do you want to come model for this brand? And I was like, mm, okay, why not? Um, so I did that and then it really just like kept evolving and um, going from there. And then next minute, so I fr did a bit of freelance, it was just like a bit of a hobby. And then um, during COVID, I had an agency reach out and like, I sort of played the game for a little bit. Like, let's see what they're all about. 
then it come to the contract. I was like, nah, this like it's not a thing. Mm. And then they r- kept coming to me and like resign the contract, like blah blah blah. Yeah. So then I yeah, we want yeah. Yeah. So like during COVID, I was like, fuck it, I'll just sign the contract, see what happens. And they booked me a shoot, pretty much two weeks after, um, and then that created and generated a little bit more work. And then yeah, next minute I knew I was like walking three runways for Melbourne Fashion Week. Um, <laughs> yeah, can't walk, can't walk in general. Welcome <laughs> to the big way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And, like, when my manager sent that through, I rang her. I was like, why the fuck are you booking me for Fashion Week? I don't know how to walk down a runway. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then it ended up leading to three. And then I think that was sort of, like, the foundation of then how I got projected out and got more exposure. And then I just, like, yeah, just kept going from nice. there. And you did some shows for First Nations Fashion as a design? Did you? Coming up. Coming up? Yeah. You're getting to work with them? Yeah, next month. Fucking cool, Down hey? the runway, yeah. So cool insane mm. for anyone listening there's a, a check out on instagram a page called first nations fashion design to it's an indigenous ran group yep. that do fashion design and they've done a few fashion shows how long they've been around for i actually don't know a couple like, of years i'm not i'm not too sure about that specifically but yeah, yeah. But it's really cool because they mix a little bit of indigenous um style like that sort of art style through their clothing designs like and real cultural yeah, and like modern so good modernized yeah and i think the cool part about that is having a whole indigenous team yeah to do, to produce that and to model it mm, absolutely yeah. well it's a sort of the best way for um any indigenous groups throughout the country to help yeah heal and 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 grow and prosper is by to celebrate how far we've like come yeah yeah to do it together as as black people and and run it for black people owned by black people and have the control over there exactly where they take it mm. so when's that coming up uh yeah next month so nice. i think it's like around may oh is that the one may in 10. sydney yeah is that the one you invited me to yes oh really well i invited you to two. did you yeah i'm coming to both come to both yes yeah tg <laughs> Little Brady on the runway. Well, not not on the runway, but shit. I'm we way can too, get you on. I'm way too short for that shit, man. Nah, well, um, I got a few legs you can borrow. <laughs> <Not a bit laughs> extra I need a trench coat as yeah. well. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. Um, I think it's probably fair to assume that your sense of humour has played a big role in helping you get through a lot of the adversity that you faced in your life. Yeah. Any any chance I can get, I'll make a joke. Yeah, because I actually think it's funny. Put light <laughs> on the situation. Well, Georgia, our friend Georgia Graham from with Gigi, she uh, it's been helping me a little bit with this show. Like it's um it's not easy to do on your own, and to have her um come in and and help uh, yeah, introduce me to people like you and help me with a few other things has been good. And she 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 suggested you as a guest. Yeah, and then I shoot you a message and yeah, hey, if you want to come. Uh, the cocktails are on me and your reply was something along the lines of oh cocktails great i'm already legless yeah <laughs> from that moment i'm a cheap drunk we're probably gonna get along pretty well <laughs> the leg jokes just don't stop <laughs> <laughs> i love it when people get awkward about it too because i'm like i did it you made them awkward. i made it Dude, yeah. that's pretty fun when you can make people awkward. and then i'll just keep reeling them in <laughs> just to make them more awkward what's the sort of stuff that makes them awkward like do you want to lick it <laughs> that wouldn't be a joke that they'll be serious yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then it does get a bit weird oh, i've had that really no <laughs> <laughs> um no i think it's like people have that i shouldn't be making a joke about it or it's not funny yeah that's what makes them awkward like i did one to my surgeon yeah the people that don't have sense of humor yeah I didn't serious. Like I might not have a leg, but at least I don't have a sense of humor. Yeah, and they'd be like, "Oh, look at this point. Oh, we, we, he's only got one and we a half legs." We can't laugh at that. Yeah, I'm and you're meanwhile joke. you're just like living your life, being happy and yeah. like laughing about stuff. Yeah, and they're like, oh, I had yeah. a, Have you seen my TikTok that went viral? Oh, I don't do TikTok. Oh, mate. So I was in the gym. <laughs> oh, Taylor's over there, like shit. <laughs> How have I not I seen this viral TikTok? TikTok? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was in the gym. And so, like, my leg, I have, like, the liner that goes Bring it on. up, TJ. Yeah. It's my name, if you know my name. Um, oh. Not that, no. 
on the can you go on the browser and go into TikTok or I think not? TikTok's just a an app. Oh. Yeah, I don't. Oh, think well you won't be able to bring it up on there then. Right. Let me try. Let's see how you go. Well, I'll explain the sitch before yeah. we watch. So I have a liner that goes on the top of the leg, silicon, so as it stays on, and then there's a pin attached to that liner that locks into the leg, and I also have a bit of suction that like sucks it on. <laughs> <laughs> I What's thought that? I heard some aerodynamics earlier when you yeah. were taking it on and off. Yeah. Like a Reebok pump kind of. Yeah, so it like... Yeah. And then there's a button and I can like... Um, should we get it up to camera? <laughs> uh, to microphone. <laughs> Locks my drink over. Oh, oh yeah. that was so small. <laughs> uh, now you got to pump it up again. What's yeah. your name? On um, James Parr with an extra R. So P-O triple R. Yeah, so anyways, I'd press the button just a little bit of air out. Yeah. So I was doing bench press just to give me a bit more um, like mobility to arch my back in the bench without realising I fucking unlocked the pin. So each rep, I could feel it slipping. And then as I sit up, it just flew off. <laughs> I, I caught it. Oh, 1.3 mil views. Oh, yeah. shit. Told you. <laughs> and anyways, so that was security camera footage that we got from my friend. <laughs> the looker. <laughs> like, oh, <shit. laughs> I was like, I hope no one fucking saw yes. that. <laughs> but if you like look through the comments, there were so many people. <laughs> <laughs> Your reaction's the best. Yeah, like, yeah. oh shit. There were so many people like having a go at me. You shouldn't be laughing at that. I'm like, why not myself? And why not? Yeah, like, imagine telling someone they're not allowed to laugh at their sales. Yeah. Shit. So, oh, let's break that one. That's one of my, like, proud career moments. That yeah, I've, everyone kind of wants to have that viral video, don't they? Yeah. Shit. It was funny. Some of the comments are real fucking thirsty, too. So someone, oh, actually, this is funny. Someone's gone, he's so cute. Can I have him or can you send him to me? And someone's gone, yeah, he'll be 25% off. <laughs> then someone else commented and was like, "Yeah, he'll be shipped in too." <laughs> and you're sitting there just cracking up. I'm like, the "That's coming. fucking fantastic!" I wish Can I thought of that. Oh, humor does get you through a lot of situations in life. Yeah, if you don't laugh, you cry, right? Exactly, mm. exactly. And you've been through some of the most difficult situations. Yeah, fuck. You still shine bright. Sure. Credit to you, man. <laughs> Credit to you. It takes a lot of strength to do that. Yeah. I think that having that childhood really built built me for it. Yeah. And um, I guess in a way you probably like can't, can't get much worse. Yeah. I think that made me really resilient and sort of through life. Like even now, um, I just don't give a fuck. Yeah. In a good way. Yeah, of course. Yeah. That's the, it's one of the most powerful things in life. Mm. Like to not give a fuck in the right way yeah. is tricky. Yeah. Because a lot hard. of people get caught up in giving their fucks in the wrong place. Yeah. You know? One thing that I did was stop watching the news. Yeah, I never watched that. Oh, man. No. The, like, doom and gloom that it puts out into your brain. All the time. Oh, my God. And if you cut that out and you just sort of stick true to you know positive in within yourself mind your own business so to speak stay in your lane but respect people in the process you know yep. don't just respect them someone steals your park of course that's frustrating Not me to but you don't know park. what's going on in their day in that day exactly you don't have to that's right lose like it. so the night taylor the day, used to get sorry taylor yeah. used to get a little bit grumpy driving up the highway to melbourne <laughs> you just get a little bit of road rage Gone a lot better. I was like, Taylor, it's, it's, it's peak hour on a Friday night. The highway's full all the way from uh, Geelong to Melbourne. No, it was 3 p.m. Oh, well, everyone's travelling no, after it had work. no business being that busy. Either <laughs> way, the, the right lane was full from bloody Little River to Tarnay, Wyndham Vale. And TJ was a bit, you know, up, up behind the car in front, getting a bit flustered. I was like, TJ, you know. We're not going to get there any faster because we're stuck. So 
just give yourself a bit of a breather. Relax. I don't blame you. Yeah. That would we all co- we all get it. We all get it, but it's that. how you deal with it. Oh yeah. Wouldn't do it in the not. new car though. No. no. Wouldn't want to get up close in the new Audi. Taylor just bought a new Audi. Oh. Yeah. Material <laughs> girl. Bougie girl. It's quite nice actually. We're gonna ride to Torquay today, in it? Aye. Yeah. Go on a coastal jam. Look at us go. Yeah, so James and I have a, have a little DJ day music festival to go to. That's why we're dressed like party boys. How cute are we? I know, right? We're going to have our matching sunnies on for the day. Oh, I forgot about that. Oh, are yours over there? Yeah. Hey, look, can you chuck my matching sunnies? Just in under the... Yeah. Give me one. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Hiya. Sure. Right. Oh, why didn't we do the whole interview like this? I know. Yeah. It's a bit dark. Do you want to tell that whole story again now? Yeah, no, I don't. <laughs> from the top, <laughs> make it drop. Oh, uh, what about you, bro? I um, I it was. You actually already knew who I was coming into this. Yeah. Shit. A little bit. Now you know, I knew. Yeah, well, I did because Georgia had said um. Something about you watched the show. Or you knew you knew, just knew who I was. Yeah. No, I watched the show. You did. That's right. Yep. You told me last night. You watched yep. it. That was the last. Last one I've watched. So. It's the best one. You're fresh in my mind, Brett. The only one to watch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what a trip. Yeah. Now you're here in my, in my shed, in my in my place, doing my thing with you're me. making me sour amaretto's. What do you reckon? Can you give a rating to any of the future? Oh, like anyone out there who's going to, um, I'll probably shoot some DMs out to people. I'll probably do a few promos, maybe try to shout out to some people. I'm going to get James to do a little review of the show, ScoopTube, to let you know what you're in for. It's literally a 10. A 10? No, I wouldn't go any less. Really? Yeah. The whole experience? 10 out of 10. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, man. Best I was, okay. Just like, perfect straight off the yeah, bat. The drinks. Yeah. What did we go through today? Margaritas? Margaritas now. So nice. Amaritas. Amaritas hours. Nice. Oh, I said it the wrong way. I, the last episode I did, I had a psychic on and she told me that I had a portal in the back corner of my backyard that was releasing um it was let the good vibes were escaping through the portal oh so i had to turn the soil for three days and um now look at me i'm getting 10 star reviews (laughs) 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 that i feel like you're just being generous though Nah, because constructive, lie. I can take constructive criticism. I'm not one of those people that handles right. rejection. Like, well, fuck you, man. Look, yeah, I could have cleaned up the shed before I got here. But yeah. on the other hand, it was all last minute. So yeah, true. Cause I you can't. can't I can't. Melbourne. Yeah, I can't take that into consideration. I'm so excited to go to a runway show with you. Yeah, it's actually really fucking fun. Checking off fitting in that sort of crowd. No. No. Nah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely won't. Nah, you would. You reckon? We'll dress you up nice. I do kind of, I'm a bit of a chameleon. I kind of can fit in with anyone. Yeah. Not that. Just got to look the part. I mask it. I don't necessarily fit in, but I just mask it well. You'll do well. I don't think I I I need an outfit. We'll get, I'll get you sorted. Maybe I could get sponsored for the day. I'll hook you up. Yeah. Who would I want to be dressed by on a runway? Easy. Can we get Yeezy and Gap to do with it? For a little pretty much that. Oh, I'd be happy with Kmart. Kmart has or some Target. Shit. Yeah, I went to a runway show um, to watch in just like this blue grandma suit that I had found at Vinnie's for twenty five dollars, yeah. and I had like the photogs photographers like doing street style, pull me left, right, and center. Nice. And they'd ask me the brand. I'm like. Okay from an op shop <laughs> I do oh, I've always had a little bit of a thing for style and fashion how fun is it it's so fun but I feel like look, I grew up in a um, a very white suburban yeah so semi country neighbourhood so it was footy club tradey life for me and that sort of environment especially back before I think social media has made a big pink, big impact on um men especially straight men feeling the confidence to be able to express themselves through their fashion yeah because you have that to- toxic masculinity thing that like oh do they bloody make him for men you know yeah. that yeah. <laughs> and you wear a pink shirt and these dudes yeah. are like whoa buddy girls color so 
um, it's 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 not. I think social media has changed that a little bit because there's more fashion inspo. You know, hashtags. It's so much. And that. Yeah, and changing fashion to be fun. Yeah. Yeah. I learned. I didn't learn how to wear pants properly until a few years ago. How do you wear them properly? Well, like, it was that awkward time where I grew up going like real baggy, baggy pants. Oh yeah, yeah. You know that was cool. The DC shades, yeah. skate shoes, and the your ass you know, out the back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the pants didn't fit. Right. And that transitioned straight into skinny leg jeans, which True. of course didn't fit either. No. And then eventually, once I got a little bit older and started dressing myself more according to the things that I liked and that suited my body shape, yeah, my pants started fitting better. Yes, sir. Helped find the right size too. <laughs> I wore a 32 for years and I was never a 32. But then I, got, I also got a little bit fitter and my body changed shape. So yeah. it fitted my weight. The love handles were gone a little bit. Cute. So it fitted my waist more. Yeah. Yeah. I, um... I have this thing where I pull like my pants up to my belly button. Yeah. Something about my belly button. You like to cover it. Yeah, it gives me the ick. You got, mm. Like, mm. I don't want my belly button out. Your own belly button. Gives yeah. You the ick. I mean, I don't think it looks bad. I just. You don't like belly buttons. I don't like it. I'm not a feet person. Come to the right place. <laughs> I only got one. <laughs> you can only half scare me. <laughs> I could pull out the other feet. You still got it in a jar. No. <laughs> Imagine that. That'd be hot. Pickled foot. Oh. Ooh. Cut a little, shave the toe off, chuck it in a burger with some ketchup and mustard. We could do that. Mmm. That'd be tasty. Yum. Maybe not. <laughs> Maybe not. We could dress it good. Shit. Well, we got a big day ahead of us. Any fashion tips for people that are dressing for a, a DJ day? I want to sort of carry up, carry along with fashion tips on this show a little bit sometimes because yeah. I feel like a lot of dudes don't know how to dress themselves. For me, some of my go-to basic um, things are color matching, tone matching. I don't like to wear prints or patterns okay. too much. It's like plain, plain. What's pr- What's really in at the moment is pattern clashes oh. that don't actually work, but then when you put them together, they they work. Shit. Yeah. How do you stay in touch with what's in oh, i don't know it's so hard because that's one of the hardest yeah. things is to keep up with what's stylish at the time yeah. um, i feel like there's a difference between a trend and style though yeah i think i don't have the answer you don't have the answer i just get dressed instagram's a good one people dress me so I don't well, really oh you have stylists and shit no nah, not now but like everywhere so i go yeah yeah? Like if I do like runways and shit or photo shoots or if I go to a runway even to watch, I make sure I... To rock up, you, you'll have yeah. been styled to get there. Yeah. Styled to come home. Yeah. Shit. I mean... I would love to do that. Only because I just feel like... Or I'll call my friends who are stylists and get them to like pull something together. But only because I think like I'm up in fashion. That's what I'm doing as a job. I want to make sure I stay. You got it. Yeah. yeah you have sort I felt of a lot of pressure coming back from the show. Like, yeah. Well, you know, people recognize me when I went out in public and usually I would have just used to dress. So fuck, I got enemy slippers and shit, you know, yeah. didn't care. Now I'm not much further on from that. I pretty much just wear the same fleece. <laughs> I just wear the same like tracky shorts, tracky pants, hoodies, and just mix and match. Cause, but I felt like every, every, I had to dress up every time I went out in public. Yeah. I always had to be looking good. Would too, yeah. So you'd be like, oh, yeah, that's that guy. Yeah. I, I he just looks fucking washed up, doesn't he? When I'm at home, I look washed up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, They're oh, used to it. <laughs> in Cobram. Yeah. Oh, they're like, there's that guy. Yeah. Yeah. And then if I, like, if I actually dress nice, I'd be like, why are you dressed so nice? I'm like, well, this is how I would dress normally. Like. Yeah. Where did you grow up? I grew up in Daniloquin. Ah, uh, Denny boy. Yeah. So yeah, we lived okay. there for eight years. Yeah. And then um, my dad, we moved to like a Chukamoama. We had another two kids there with a, with a girl uh-huh. straight after my mum died. And then he, um, yeah, and then I left from there. Shit, man. Yeah. Country, up around the Murray. Yeah. Mighty Murray. It's a beautiful part of the country. 
so nice, but I barely go into that Murray. Yeah. You think it's nice, but... It's dangerous. I feel, I feel it's like... It's nice to look at. Yeah. I feel like when you're in it, like it's when you so live thunder. there, you just don't go in there. Well, I don't. Yeah. What are some of freaks do me those out? floats that, you know, get the tractor tubes. Yeah, that's what fr- freaks me out. Something about what are you worried? Sharks going to get you? Yeah. There's no sharks in the Murray. I know. It's not even I get crocs. paranoid. I guess Big Murray Cod could... Yeah, 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 the foot. Got to hold on to that fucker. <laughs> Honestly, what happened to your legs? Wow, funny story. One. Let me tell you. <laughs> one was one cancer. Of them. <laughs> and the other, bloody Murray Cod. Should have seen sh- the size of the thing. <laughs> one was a shark in the Murray. <laughs> oh, shit. What are we at, <gasps> TG? Wait. Uh, oh, go on. 50 minutes. Cool. I wanted to tell you the, the Tinder bio. Oh, yeah, we got. Yeah. Wait, which one are we going into? What do you mean? Oh, you know, this is the... Well, we're going to do Grindr later. Yeah. Grindr's we'll like do that off whole line. fucking... that off air. Um, I feel like I'm good at um, helping people with their dating apps. I used to spend a lot of time well, on dating apps. Well, you can rate the Tinder bio. But the last time I spent time on a dating app, it was absolute. <laughs> oh, my God. Really I I barely use it. I just have it there when Very I'm bored. necessary evil, though, aren't they, James? Mm, like, hey, how are you? What's up? I had a really good opening the other day, actually. Oh, yeah? Match with a guy, and he goes, just going to the supermarket, do you need anything? Nice. <laughs> That's fucking nice. nice. That was really good. <laughs> did, did you <laughs> 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 what did you say back? Um, well, we actually need some garbage bags. Yeah. And so I was like, oh, can you pick me up some garbage bags? Been using those pink ones that the council put in your letterbox <laughs> to collect the, the clothes. The clothes collection. <laughs> we do need bin bags. Shit. That's good. So did he drop some off? Uh, no, I forgot Red to Red flag. <laughs> <laughs> Unmatch. <Yeah. laughs> He's garbage anyway. <laughs> <laughs> if he, he got some, he could put himself out in them. <laughs> um, all right. I'm going to be so embarrassed if you don't laugh because I actually think it's funny. Okay. Personality... Nine out of ten. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Sense of humor, ten out of ten. Yeah. Looks. I just put five because, like. Oh, come nah, on. Nah, nah, nah. Five out of ten. Legs, one out of two. <laughs> 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 then I've just gone like model triathlete, whatever. Perks of whatever. dating. Perks of dating me. Good car parks for the rest of our life. Yeah, true. Yep. True. <laughs> And then a lot of people always ask how tall I am, so I have six foot four, but missing a foot, so technically five foot four. <laughs> Let me see. I want to b- judge the pictures and stuff. Yeah. I'm nervous about the pictures. Nah, don't be. I feel like you'd have a good... Um, Some are modelling ones. <laughs> yeah, got to. Thanks for coming. I always put a couple of the best of me in there. And then we have a few. That's the point of it, yeah, isn't you, it? Yeah, it's an advertising yeah. profile for your... Um, yeah, that's a great shot with the leather gloves. Ooh, sitting in the window, looking so handsome. Yeah. That's why I model so I can get the good Tinder pics. Yeah, true. Oh, Sonny's on, having a big smile. GG. Yeah, GG made Made it. the profile. Nah, that's great. Ooh, and the suit looks sharp. Yeah, that's a good profile. I'd swipe right. You might be the only person. <laughs> <laughs> I doubt that after last night's efforts. <gasps> Oh, <laughs> you've exposed me. No, I haven't. I was here for five you, minutes and I hooked up a booty call yeah, already. Yeah, it didn't take you long. <laughs> Last night, I got to go. Got a booty call. Well, they came around quick. They did. Pulled up in the black Jag. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I'm like, yeah. Okay, Jag That's boy. That's what I wanted. It's the car I wanted. Yeah, TG. Oh. TG starts the conversation with me. So wow. I know uh, someone. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you can rent it a couple of days I know. Him, I know him a Bit well too, <laughs> <laughs> intimately. Yeah. <laughs> Share some really specific recommendations. So how fast is this thing go? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you talking about the car or me? Oh, <laughs> two different answers. Let me show you. <laughs> I'll take you for a ride. All right. <laughs> oh my god, the dating world's a strange place to be. Oh these my days. god, it's that tricky. dating tricky. The I, judgments made very soon in yeah, there. Yeah. I, look, I have them, but I don't very actively use them. Um, like I just, when I'm bored, Grinder gives me a lot of entertainment. 
Yeah. Grind is a scary, a scary time. Scary in what way? People are fucking wild. Yeah, they're just ferocious. Like, people won't even say, hey, how are you? They'll just send you what time? pick of their asshole. Really? <laughs> yeah. Straight to the staff. Like, I don't want to see that. Yeah, there should be like a consent for, uh, uh, um consultation, consultation form. form. Yeah, I told you. No one gets that joke. So. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So you can just straight up send pics on Grinder, like. Yeah, I mean, people are straight into it. What's that supposed to lead to if you send that sort of picture to someone? I feel like, you? well, I feel like Grinder's more of just like a hookup app. Yeah. Okay. So um, like, hey, if you like this, yeah, come and like top. Do you do you know what the it. gay gay little slangs they have? No. Like top. Bottom. Actually, that's what verse. we could do. We because I I'm like I said, growing up in the footy footy tradey culture, I don't have many bisexual or gay friends or um, queer friends. Yeah, queer yeah. friends. They're yeah, true. So you can help me learn some of the ebonics. All right. So <laughs> the um, I feel like I know one because I go. most resemble. What is it? Twink. Oh, you wouldn't be a twin. No? No. Oh, damn. You'd be like a... <laughs> <laughs> damn it. No. <laughs> Twinks like your little young boys. Yeah, little toy boy. Nah. Nah? You'd be like a... Oh. Uh, mm. I know the word furry. Yeah, yeah I'm no, pretty bear, furry. bear, bear. <laughs> but you, I, you wouldn't be a bear. You'd be like a cub. A cub? Rawr. Cub is like a younger bear. Rawr. Yeah. I won't bite you too hard. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't be able to bear that. <laughs> I'd be like, Pooh Bear, where's the honey? Where's the candy? And then and then you go into to your like positions. Okay. So we have a top. Yeah, top, bottom. You I know, know those ones, yeah. Yep, top, bottom, verse. Well, wait, actually, I know them, but maybe people at home don't understand yeah, what so the top and the bottom is. And what's a verse? Verse is both. Oh. Yeah. So okay. So, so the top is the person that gives it, yeah. I guess. And then the bottom is the person that takes it. Yeah. Yeah. And a verse is sort of switch yeah. roles. Depends how they feel on the day. Yeah, cool. Yeah. So so they have all that in their profile. I feel like there's a lot more options. Well, I mean, you being bisexual, you double the options, don't you? Yeah, no. Nah? Girl, girls are a bit weird when you say you're bisexual. Mm. They just see you as gay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. What would do you have a split, like a sixty forty split or a fifty yeah. fifty split or a what? Maybe like seventy thirty. Men. Yeah. Men are more accessible. More accessible, less sort of Yeah, just jump on grind. Less um court the courting period would be yeah. much ra- more rapid. Yeah, and you don't have to I feel like girls um You need a little to you're warm a bit, up. You're a bit harder to get. Yeah. Yeah. Play which hard is to fair. Get. But there's a lot of reasons for that. I mean, um, exactly. we as men take up, well, a lot of men aren't are really aware of the the danger that they present, no matter how trustworthy you are. There's an uh, element of um, protection that women yeah. have to do in, in the dating game. And that's where a lot, uh, part of the courting process goes down to that. Whereas men v men, it'd probably be a bit more, go, go for it. I love that <laughs> little. <laughs> Get in there. Yeah, no, that's straight to the point. Yeah. Um, the l- the last girl I went on a on a date with gave me the ick. Um so it scarred me for a little bit. She just kept talking about fighting. I find it so gross. What do you mean fighting? Like going Fart, to the no, box? Farting. Farting. Yeah. Yeah. That's an ick for me. Yeah, I I was sort of um had an entanglement with a girl that liked to talk about bowel movements a lot. No. Announce it. It was a bit of a gag for her, make other people feel uncomfortable and show how comfortable she was talking about it. That's not funny. I was like, but it yeah, it's not funny. And you know, like, it's just one of those things that people don't necessarily talk about, especially yeah. when you're at a restaurant. Oh, exactly. <laughs> talk about fighting. No <laughs> thanks. Yeah. Like, I would never fight in front of anyone. It's Even when my friends fight, like, get out. Yeah. Like, I'm not looking at you for the next 10 minutes. I was I'm working grossed. with a guy the other day in a cool room. We were placing some fluoro globes and light fittings, and he kept fighting. And I was like, are you right, bro? Because I'm in here with you. And you're just fighting it like... That's gross. You may as well cupcake me then. Like, <laughs> nah, you may yeah, as well. Yeah, no, nah, that's gross. I don't, and I don't know how people think that's like socially acceptable. Fighting. To just let it out. Has anyone ever like done something like that on a date with you? What's your most... What's your... Taylor, you might have one as well. What's your worst date story? I don't have any... Oh, actually, I, I've got I, a bad one. 
I never tell this one. Oh shit, we're but, in. But I can drop it. Come on. Right. So <laughs> when I lost my leg and got the prosthetic, I ended up getting a staph infection, so I had to have two more surgeries. They, they took another centimeter off and that sort of thing. Me and my friend had booked to go to Lizzo. And during that time is after I had those surgeries, so I was on crutches. Um, so I couldn't wear the prosthetic. Anyway, we had been drinking all day. I met with someone that worked at the hotel we were staying at. They bought us up a free bottle of champers. We got into that. We went down to the bar that he was working at. I already had a few drinks. Then we went to Lizzo. Like, believe me when I say I was literally fucking legless. I was <laughs> off my head. <laughs> so I had <coughs> made these plans to go to this restaurant. Oh, no, to this bar with him afterwards. And we went. And like, I'm pretty good on crutches. But I don't think he really thought about the whole stair scenario. <laughs> it was a whole flight of stairs. Like a massive flight, like 28 steps. Anyway, so we get up there and we're there, whatever. I have, I have a few more fucking drinks. And then I got up to go to the bathroom. I slipped on just one step in front of everyone. And it's so much worse when you have one one leg. Yeah. Because <laughs> everyone cares more. It was like the like, I'm fine. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, I just went to the toilet, come back. Then we ended up leaving. I went down one step. I just yeeted down the whole, <laughs> <Yeet>. literally. <laughs> do, 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 do. I felt it falling and I could have saved myself. And I remember thinking, no, I'll just go. <laughs> <laughs> and I just rolled down this whole flight of stairs. That's my worst. <laughs> That's more embarrassing to you. I was yeah. more thinking like what some sh like weird and wonderful people things people have done on days. I like you. telling that. That's you. But I guess me. that's the number one, isn't it? Yeah. I don't think I have like really any more like bad ones. Is it more common to have awkward like shitty dates with men or awkward shitty dates with women? Men. Yeah. Girls are more fun whereas men are just yeah. like, oh. Yeah, we're not good at the dating. No. Like, we don't put our manners on as well, do we? Some do. Mm. Depends the type of person but, but generally they're sort of like a bit sort of standoffish. Yeah. Like tell me your relationship with your dad. <laughs> Give me something good. Yeah, let's get deep from the like, start. Yeah. What about you, TJ? You had any horror dates? Uh, nothing like, yeah, probably not like a horror, sort of more like James's. Actually, not even that embarrassing. Um, <clears throat> I had met this guy at work and um, I f fooled around a little unconventionally a couple weeks before. Um, went on a date. Date was really good. At the end of the date, like I picked him up, dropped him off, put my car in park, and just instinctually, we both shook hands. <laughs> Thanks, mate. And that was the end of it. Thanks, mate. Taylor. Yep. <laughs> See you, Taylor. <laughs> and now nice he's, doing business. Yeah, now he's got a girlfriend that he shakes hands with all the time, not me. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, my date wasn't supposed to, my horror date wasn't supposed to be a date. So, so I had a person, like not long after I was on the show, a person inboxed me and saying, um, you know, some nice stuff. I've watched, watched oh, he seemed down to work and everything. And um, she seemed like the kind of person that I'd be friends with in real life. And she told me that she was queer. So I felt safe that it was just a plutonic friendship, interaction, relationship. And um, eventually she, oh, I'm back in Melbourne, let's catch up for a drink. I thought, yeah, no worries doing anything on a Wednesday night I'll go catch up for a drink went all the way there and it sort of started like verbal kind of like oh yeah you know I think you're really cute and all this sort of stuff and I was like aren't you mm. this isn't like no. oh yeah I'm fluid that way <clears throat> and then it was just on like she was like touching me like holding my face like put her legs across me I was like can you stop please I feel really uncomfortable can you just sit back and Oh, and like put my hands up palms in the air and was like oh, i feel uncomfortable like three times she just kept coming like full 100 percent energy all right. the time putting it on me and then eventually like i was like I, i'm gonna have to go i feel really uncomfortable i got up I was like, where's the toilet she's like i'll show you i'm like no it's all good Dra dragged me down the hallway tried to take me into the cubicle slipped into the next one and locked the door and was like 
And then, like, when now I'm like, nah, I'm going. She's like, oh, I'll come to the tram stop with you. Can I come back to your house? Like, sorry, that's a bit weird. But I got on the wrong tram going in the opposite direction and I just got out of there. Goodness. Yeah, it was really shit. Also, like, I think that's, like, a um, interesting to see how, you know, I, I guess men are always seen as, like, predatory or something mm. in that sort of sense. But when you have a woman doing it, yeah, it made me feel really, like, really uncomfortable. Yeah. And obviously, uh, I was bigger and stronger. Like, I could have, you know, mm. pushed... I was never in any danger, but... um, Still, to be that uncomfortable. Encroaching yeah. on your personal space and not taking, you know... I no, for uncomfortable an answer. Was, yeah. yeah, it was not nice. That was my worst date. Right. Mm. Okay. That heaps, was... Heaps worse than ours. Yeah. Yeah, They've that gone was... gone dark. <laughs> 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 Oh no! <laughs> Wait, it's no. The time. first one worked still. <laughs> <laughs> I need to label these or something. Like, uh, the, the first, the first one did well the too. The crickets, yeah. <laughs> I need violins or something. Yeah. Well, what about my best date then? We'll bring it Ooh. up with that sort of thing. Go. Shit, I'm actually pretty good at doing dates. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, you look do? at this. I give you the cocktails and I sit down in here, put some music on. Is you this know, a date now. Well, it could be. <laughs> <laughs> Turn the cameras off. <laughs> yeah, no, leave them on. Only fans. <laughs> I told you. Well, um, Bank. yeah, thinking about it, make some cash on it. Like same. <coughs> I feel like it's kind of like dealing drugs, though. You'd get you get sucked in. I'd end up going full nudes. Yeah, you do that. I'll sell the stunt pics. Okay. <laughs> There's a We're going to have a joint page. Yeah. What's a good name going to be for our joint page? Get stumped. <laughs> Get scumped. Yes. <laughs> it's so dirty. Well, stumped, but scumped <laughs> yeah, works too. Yeah, scuba. We do both. I get it. That's hot. I like it. Get Just scumped. <laughs> oh, subscribe. It sounds dirty, doesn't it? Yeah. Shit. It will be dirty. Won't just sound dirty. Well, you said it was going to be clean. Just stumps nah. and calves. I've changed my mind now. We're getting dirty. Because we're doing it together. Okay. Yeah. Well, we better get going then. Any you last know. any last sort of questions? And, um, Do you want to take the microphones over to the, the bedroom? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. We'll start taking some shots for our OnlyFans. Got the lighting, got, got the cameras. Do I get to stand behind the camera, not just place it in there? Oh, no, get in front. Okay, cool. Yeah, well, Taylor can we have Taylor can get in the OnlyFans. Yeah, nice feminine touch. Yeah, we need <laughs> probably would help a lot actually, because <laughs> then um, we'll have more audience. Yeah, absolutely. We could up why our limit fee. your uh, why limit your audience? Yeah, mm. diversify our options. <laughs> uh, diversify our portfolio. Our portfolio. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! Well, any uh, last final words for me? Any questions, queries, or no? Nah. Got nothing for me. No, I don't. Come in here, sit down, talk all about yourself. Got nothing yeah. for little Breddy. Well, I feel like we we spoke about you because yeah. we didn't want to talk about me. Yeah, I guess so. Like yeah. last night and stuff, we did. Yeah. Let me think of something. Have you got any questions? I'll try and think. I feel like we've sort of touched on a lot of things. You know. Actually, I do have one question. Going back to um, cause one of the things that I do in the show is that I like to talk to people about their stories and. Uh, some of the stories do involve these these heavier subjects, trauma, addiction. Um, and we were talking earlier about your resilience and your ability to keep yourself moving forward yep. and escaping the, the pain of the past. Is there things that you can identify within your life, whether that be hobbies, friendships, places music, whatever it might be, the things that you did to help improve your mental state or get you away from those places? Yeah, I think music was definitely one that really helped me through some shit. Um, down to when I lived with my dad, or down from when I lived with my dad or um, when I was having chemo and that sort of thing. Music sort of just kept me alive <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like in a way and listening or playing or no just listening yeah 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 um and then 
I think maybe the ability to sort of always see the light or create the light at the Optimism. end of the tunnel. Yeah. Um, you know, always, like, back in my childhood, always thought, it's okay, like, um, you're not going to be in this forever sort of thing. Um, yeah, sort of just, like, creating a dream world in my head and then going to fulfil that. Yeah. Yeah. Something to work towards. Yeah. It's something that a lot of people struggle to picture is what their dream world looks like. Yeah. I had a friend in here the other night and he was discussing a career change. And I was like, well, what are you passionate about? He's like, nothing. Mm. It's like, well, no, you, you are. You're passionate about a lot of things, but you haven't acknowledged and pursued the passions to actually develop them. You know, and he loves sneakers. I was like, you love sneakers. To, you know, looking at buying and selling sneakers, don't you? Mm. And whatever, it's, if it's this, if it's that, if it's that. But a lot of people don't ha uh, struggle to be able to picture what their ideal world is and how to yeah. get there. Yeah. Right? I think when you I think it like comes down to sitting in a dark room or you can turn the light on and you know it is hard. Mm. But um yeah, I think that's like for me that's what really got me through. Yeah. And then to be able to go and do those things that I had Music's about. powerful, isn't it? Yeah. I like to if I'm ever having a down day or you know a bit slow getting out of bed or well actually I do it every day. I get up I have a shower, telling you before I have my coffee in the shower, I take the keg cup in the shower and I crank tunes yep. in the morning to get myself up, whatever it might be, just put your bangers on because it just gets you going. Yeah, motivates you. Nobody knows what it means, but it's provocative, gets the people going. I do listen to that track a lot actually in That's, the morning. I can rap that whole thing. I bet you can. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's so can I. I've been practicing. <laughs> 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 It'll breach our copyright if we if we do it for the cameras. But um yeah, music golf golf was one for me. Like it's a bit of a mindfulness thing. Yep. You get out on the golf course and concentrate on your golf swing and practice and be out in nature. It's a whole all encompassing sort of yep. um escape for me. Yeah. Mm. Training too. Training. Me, yeah. Or you training. Tri triathlons and yeah, stuff. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, even when I did CrossFit, I still do that every now and then now. And that that's a big one for me. Yeah, just boxing's been been getting me out of the dirt lately. Yeah, doesn't it just enable you to like reset? You just feel a bit stronger. Like after the exercise wears off, and you sort of get those endorphins, you just feel a bit more like, oh, my problems are a little bit further behind me than yeah. they were a little bit. You they're still care. they're still chasing me, but I'm running a bit yeah. faster now. You're less worried. You actually, shouldn't run from your problems. But <laughs> I mean. The, the fight against them. You start I hop to win from it. them. <laughs> 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 oh shit! All right, James. I oh, look. I really appreciate you coming in here and sharing your story. The things that you've spoken about are really not easy for people to to be open and honest about. But one of the things that I'm trying to do is have people like you come in here and share their stories. And uh, anyone out there that may have gone through similar things, the same things, or not even gone through these things at all, been completely shielded from them through their, you know, their family life or their privilege or whatever it might be, to be able to get an insight into the reality that other people live and how that people like you have faced these challenges, dealt with these challenges, learned to live with these challenges or overcome these challenges. I feel like it's a powerful message to put out there. So I appreciate your time and I appreciate you being so open and honest with me. Thank you for coming in, my bro. For having me. And one last thing is that you and I need to uh, take a little Polaroid together, Cute. do some darts, and I always have to mention that the reason we are here is because of my beautiful, beautiful friends at Folklore, Vietnamese Street Food. All of this wouldn't be possible without their generosity. We we're supposed to go in there and have lunch today, but they're shut for Good Friday. So thank you, everyone. Peace. <laughs>